Have you ever wondered how some businesses are able to do millions and millions and millions of dollars, but most businesses, in fact, most businesses across America make less than $100,000 per year, even less amount make a million dollars a year, and even less than that make more than a million dollars a year. Just a few short years ago, when I had started my business, I was stuck at about $50,000 a month. Now you might be sitting here watching this going, 50,000 bucks a month, that would be awesome. Well, if you've been in business for some time, you understand $50,000 a month is not that much. At the time we had 13 employees, you know, my office, I have all my overhead. So we were really struggling. We were in this hamster wheel of, you know, we're working, to make barely make payroll so that we could work again to barely make payroll. It was a nightmare and I was racking my brain around the idea. How in the world, I'm talking to other entrepreneurial friends who are saying like, man, we do 100K a month, we do 500K a month, we do a million a month. And I couldn't get my brain wrapped around how are they doing this in today's training, I'm gonna be sharing with you the seven skills needed in order to take you from where you are now to your desired result. A lot of people call that success, right? And if you can apply these seven skills, you will absolutely figure out the formula that caused me to learn it's easier to make a lot of money in a short amount of time than it is to make a little bit of money in a long period of time. We're covering all of it in today's training. Come with me over here to the board and we're going to get started. Before we can get into uh, the seven skills, I want you guys to understand, I'm, I'm actually going to lay a little bit of a foundation uh, as far as compound interest goes, because that's going to be a precursor to the second part that I want to talk about, which is compound skills, which will lead us to the actual skills you need to go from where you are now to where you want to be in your success. If you're excited, if you're ready, if you're fired up, drop some fire emojis in the comments, okay? So let's talk about compound interest, all right? What is compound interest? It's important that we understand what compound interest is because of where we're going um, in today's training, okay? So let's say the bank, okay? This is how compound interest goes. Let's say you bring your money over to the bank, okay? And let's say, we're just gonna use, we're gonna use round numbers just for the sake of simplicity, okay? Let's say you come and you bring your 100 bucks to the bank and just to say thank you for parking your money in the bank, Obviously, this is a humongous way of how the banks make money. Just to say thank you, the bank is going to pay you. Let's just say this specific bank, this is high, but again, just for the sake of round numbers. Let's say the bank says, hey, thank you so much for keeping your money here. Just to say thank you, we are going to pay you a 10% interest on your money just to say thanks for keeping your money here. Okay, so after the first year, Guess how much you're going, if you don't touch the 100, after the first year, they'll pay you 10%. So guess what happens? All of a sudden now, after one year, you now have $110 in your account in this specific situation. Wave at me if you're tracking with me, all right? You guys tracking with me so far, right? But the crazy part about compound interest is it compounds. So let's keep going deeper, okay? So let's say you're like, hey, that was cool. I made 10 bucks for free in this specific context, right? And that was awesome. And I'm just gonna keep my money there again. So, you know, you keep it there an extra year and they pay you another 10% on this. And now, let's see, 10%, I think that's 121 bucks. Now in year two, you've got $121 in your account simply because of this concept called, oops, compound interest, okay? Now, why in the world are we talking about compound interest when Rick, you were just saying, I'm gonna give you the seven skills needed for success. The reason is, is because we need to understand when it comes to skills, money is not the only thing that can compound on top of itself. Skills can also compound on top of themselves, okay? Uh, in fact, this is the, the main reason why I'm always harping on the internet, all over YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, all over 
over social media, I'm always putting out posts, um, you know, probably every four, five, six posts, I'm encouraging people to invest in themselves. You know, a lot of times people think like joining a mentorship or joining a training program, like, oh, that's a scam, right? Let me ask you a question. What's the bigger scam? Uh, the fact that you're grown and you're still broke or the fact that you're willing to invest in your knowledge and your education to better yourself. Because guys, the punchline is this, no matter what's going on in the economy, no matter what's going on politically, no matter what is happening in the world, no one can take your skills from you, right? In fact, skills are one of the only assets that you can invest into that are fully and 100% recession proof. I need at least five people in the comments to drop these words, recession proof, okay? You wanna get recession proof, you've got to invest in yourself. You know, I think it's funny, people are like, man, it's a scam to join programs, it's a scam to join mentorships. Like, what's a bigger scam? Like, we, like being grown and broke, I think is a much bigger scam, right? It's, it's interesting interesting to me that we've all been warned about the beware of the get rich quick schemes, but no one warned us about the stay broke your whole entire life scheme, right? So we've got to break out of this uh, vicious cycle, this hamster wheel of the nine to five where we, you know, this is what they tell us in culture. This is, this is how they brainwash, you know, people so that they can stay small, stay little in their potential financially is, okay, you got to go to school so you can go to college. So you can get a good job so that you can pay for school, right? It's this vicious cycle and no one can ever get ahead. But when you start investing in your skills, one more time, I need at least 10 people in the comments, drop the word skills, okay? So just the same way that your money can begin to build compound interest, your skills can build compound interest. And the reason why I need to lay this foundation out first here, just for a few more moments before we get to the actual skills that you need is because you need to understand the power of what I'm trying to tell you guys when it comes to leveling up your skills. Come back with me here to the board, okay? So check this out. Now that we understand the power of compound interest, I wanna share with you guys another level that I call compound skills, okay? What does this mean? Okay, let's say you are a skilled a uh, salesperson, okay? Some people are, some people aren't, but sales is something that any person can learn, right? There's a psychology that goes to it, and really any person can learn the psychology and the system of sales. So whether you have natural charisma or, you know, your skill may not even be sales. Maybe your skill is, I'll list a couple of mine, a lot of you guys and gals know, um, I've been a worship leader for 25 plus years, 79 nations all over the world, you know, probably thousands of churches over 25 years. And so there was a, a certain set of skill sets that that came with that, number one, um, I'm just riffing off the top of my head, being confident, speaking, and you know, talking in front of people, that was a skill, right? Because I had to stand up on the stage and lead people in the worship all the time. Networking with people, right? Connecting with people, learning how to bring value, add value to their life, and then when the time came, they would also contribute value, value to my life. So networking was another skill. I want you to begin to think of, okay, what are the skills that I have? And here's the crazy part about this, okay? the skill that you have, you need to start understanding there's not only one way to use your skill. This is where a lot of people get tripped up is they only think of using their skill in one specific way, okay? But let's take a, a hammer, for instance. I'm just making all of this up. Most people are going to think like, man, you know, this hammer, you use it one way. You, you pound nails. This is the way to use a hammer. And yes, that's true. But what if you were on a camping trip and you don't have um, any matches for a fire and it's freezing outside, but you have a hammer. Now, the logical mind is like, well, I can't do anything with this hammer, but if you were creative with looking at your skills through different lenses, you could begin to think, huh, okay, this hammer has a wooden lever. I can do something with this. And then the, the, the iron piece here, if I 
strike this against a rock, I could probably get some sparks. And then maybe, you, you guys see where I'm going with this, right? If you learn how to use your skills in new and unique ways, everything begins to go to the next level in the possibilities, okay? So the same thing goes for the compounding of our skills. The same way your money can compound in the bank and over time it just grows and grows and grows, your skills do the same thing. Come back with me to the board and let me continue to explain. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's go back to our example. Maybe you've got the uh, skill of sales, okay? And just for the sake of the video today, obviously you guys know I teach digital products. It's a big part of what I teach. Okay, so just with this one skill alone, you know, you can, you can easily make, oops, you can easily make six figures a year just by learning how to sell, right? But what if you also had the skill of marketing, right? Just because you're a good salesperson doesn't mean that you are a good marketer. What if you begin to learn how to tell your market about the value that you have to solve their problem coupled with the fact that you are skilled in the area of sales, okay? So one of these skills by itself is powerful, but when you stack these skills on top of themselves, your skills begin to compound. Come back with me here, so check this out. If you only know how to sell, right, you can make like 100K a year, you know, then you add marketing to it, then you could, with marketing and sales alone, you could make multiple six figures in a year, right? But then what if you also had the skill of copywriting? I'm not talking about music copywriting, I'm talking about like the skill of knowing exactly how to write a solid email or the skill of knowing exactly how to write a very intriguing post, uh, uh, sorry, uh, text to your Instagram posts or your Facebook posts, right? Now you begin to see, wow, these skills begin to compound on top of themselves. And finally to the point, guys, it literally gets, you know, and then if you add another skill, this is a wonky looking, <laughs> Uh, triangle here, but um, you know, it gets to the point where these skills start compounding on themselves. And then maybe this skill up here is you have a killer, you're awesome at putting together offers, right? Well, guys, I'm telling you right now, just with this specific skill set, you could go from 100 to multiple six figures. And then as these three compound on top of themselves, you could go to a million a year. And then if you add this one here, right, then you could easily go to 10 million a year, right? So the same way your money can compound, your skills also compound. So you've got to begin to sharpen your skills, okay? It doesn't matter how awesome your ax is, if it's not sharp, it's gonna take you way longer to chop that tree down if it were to be sharp versus if it were to be dull. So whatever skills you have now, this is just one example because we're talking about, you know, business and digital products, et cetera today. But I want you guys to begin to expand and open up your mind and maybe even take a few moments, hopefully you're writing notes down, take a few moments and begin to write down what are your skills. And don't, don't come at me and go like, I don't have any skills. That's a loser mindset, okay? We we only want to run with winners, right? You have to see yourself differently, right? You're like, oh, I don't have any skills. Yes, you do. And a lot of times the skills that God has given you or the skills that you've developed over time, you don't consider it a skill because you're like, oh, anyone could do this. No, they can't. I will tell you all this. Here's a prime example, right? Like I tried to, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I tried to change light bulbs in my bathroom two weeks ago and I messed it up, y'all. Like I am the unhandled handiest handyman that ever existed, period, right? Like being handy is not my skill. I remember when my wife and I first got married, this is hilarious, when my wife and I first got married, she was like, yo, now by the way, my my wife's dad, my father-in-law is like the most skilled handyman ever. He builds whole entire houses with his bare hands type thing, right? So he's like mega, does sewage, does electrician, does uh, stonework, I mean, he's, he's a boss. So when my wife and I got married almost 20 years ago, she just 
just assumed her husband could do all that cool stuff too. And she was like, yo, can you hang this uh, floating shelf for me <laughs> in our bathroom? And I was like, uh, I can try. Y'all, I went to Lowe's and I bought this jank, weird floating shelf, you know, and I was like, oh, I could do this, right? And then I took it home and I didn't even think to measure. So this thing was like, it didn't even fit. I, I had to put it in crooked and I'm like, I, it looks kind of weird, but she's probably okay with it. And I'm like, hey, what do you think? It's kind of crooked. She's like, no, babe, this is so crooked. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. So I, I'm like, what should I do? She's like, you have to cut it. You have to cut the shelf. You have to measure. I'm like, oh yeah. So I, I get a measurement and then I go back to Lowe's and then I get like this janked out little baby saw and it had a pink handle. I don't even know why I bought the, the girl version, you know, of this little baby, like, you know, six-year-old daughter, baby girl saw. And I'm like, this works, okay. And I bring this home and I'm like sawing this floating shelf with no measurements, nothing's holding in place. I saw it all crooked. And then I, it was just a nightmare. By the time it was done, okay, there were holes in the wall. Like the thing was nasty, it was crooked. Like everyone's upset. So what? why am I telling this story? Because what comes easy to you may not come easy to me. So don't limit yourself and say, I don't have any skills. Blah, blah. Yes, you do. You have at least something. I believe that God has given everybody one, maybe two, maybe five. It's the parable of the talents, right? He gives all of us something that you can begin to sharpen and leverage. And, you know, coming to trainings like this, right? Sharpening your skills by listening to trainings like this are going to allow you to add Add even more skills so that you can get to where you want to get faster in your success path. Okay, so come with me back to the board here. And before we jump into the actual seven skills I want to give you guys, I really want to break this down for you guys. So for those who don't know, my coaching company, oops, my coaching company is called Get Wisdom. Okay, and all of my coaching programs are underneath you know, this umbrella, get wisdom. And it's it comes from Proverbs chapter four, where the Bible literally says, get wisdom, get understanding in all you're getting out of everything you get in life, get understanding, get wisdom. And it's interesting because if you go in to search what the word wisdom means there, it's actually mind blowing if you don't know this, check this out. The word wisdom in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew language, is actually, it translates into the English word, guess what? The English word, skill. I think a lot of times there are uh, people, specifically Christians, right? Um, who they ask God for wisdom. James chapter one, verse five, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all abundantly, right? And we're like, God, give me wisdom. And this is how I absolutely have been in the past, probably like maybe some of you watching, right? God, please give me wisdom. And for some reason, my interpretation of how that works was, God, please give me wisdom. And then God's just gonna go poof. And all of a sudden like, I'm wise. You know, like it doesn't work like that, right? So the way that we get wisdom is actually to grow in skill, right? And I'm telling you guys this right now, wherever you are right now and wherever you want to be, the only thing separating you from your current reality to your coveted reality is the level of wisdom or the level of skill that can bridge you from point A to point B. So. I wanna encourage you guys and gals, the same way your money can begin to compound in the bank, your skills can begin to compound on top of each other. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into that here in just a moment, but drop some fire emojis in the comments if you guys and gals are ready for the seven skills to success, okay? Drop some fire emojis, let's get into it, right? So we need to press in for wisdom or skill, okay? Let me write you another picture here, okay? So this is you. This is your current situation, okay? And this right here is your coveted situation, whether that's financially or in life or whatever it is, right? And so how in the world do we get you from here to here, right? So many people, they get discouraged in their process because they just can't fathom 
How in the world is it ever going to change? How in the world am I ever going to break past out of my nine to five? How is it even possible that people are making like $50,000 a month, let alone $100,000 a month, a million dollars a month? Like that's just, I can't even see how you make this jump. But guys, I'm gonna share with you right now, any person can make this jump. But the problem people make is they think they have to make the full entire jump just in one leap but that's not how it works. Here's how it works. Hey, I really hope that you're enjoying the video. I wanna invite you guys. I have recently created a free training teaching people how to make money online. My students are literally making anywhere from five to $10,000 a month, and some of them even make hundreds of thousands of dollars, not in a year, but in a single day. If you want more information on how you can get started, all you need is a phone and a laptop. You can go to digitalproductacademy.org or you can click the link below in the description. Guys, after you watch the free training, if it sounds like it might be something cool for you to check out, you can book a free call with one of my client success coaches and they'll be able to help you more. Now, back to the video. The way you make this jump is you you need a ladder, right? If you try to just make the jump by yourself in one humongous leap, of course it's impossible, you can't do it. But what if you were to have a skill and this step was a skill and this step was a skill and this step was a skill, all of a sudden all you gotta do is use your skills to go from where you are now to where you want to be. In fact, if you're taking notes, write this down. Everything boils down to first you gotta develop your mindset, okay? Then you gotta develop your skill set. Then you have to develop your tool set, okay? Mindset is first. If you don't believe that it's possible to go from point A to point B at all, if you are brainwashed by culture like, oh man, rich people are greedy and having money is bad and you know, I don't want that much, I just want enough to take care care of me and mine. If that's your mindset, you are never going to build wealth, right? I think one of the most selfish things that people can say, one of the most selfish mindsets people can have is, oh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want as, I don't want to make as much money as I can. I just want enough. I'm not greedy. But let me ask you a question. Like in any other area of your life, if I were to be like, yo, how healthy do you want your kids to be? Could you imagine if someone's like, oh, just healthy enough? What, you don't want them to be as healthy as absolutely possible? No, 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 just, just healthy enough, right? Like how thrive, how, how thriving do you want your marriage to be? Eh, just, just thriving enough. You don't want to push it to the absolute maximum potential? No, no, no. I'm not greedy like that. I just, I just want my marriage just to be good enough, right? Or how about your health? Like how healthy do you want to be? I just want to be healthy enough. I don't, I don't want to be like mega healthy. Like, yeah, I just want to be healthy enough. I'm not greedy. Then why do we say that about our money, right? Like we have to get unbrainwashed and understand our mindset has to be in the right place. If you believe that money's bad, having a lot of money is wicked, then God is probably not going to entrust a lot of it to you. Okay, so mindset, skill set, like we're talking today. Guys, you got to sharpen your skills, man. You got to learn how to talk to people. You got to learn how to sell. You got to learn how to create digital products, right? You got to learn how to build these funnels. Everything that we teach you in the Digital Product Academy program, you got to learn these skills because with every skill you learn, it's another step up the ladder from where you are to where you want to be, okay? And then tool set. What's the tool set? The tool set is uh, the different opportunities that are at your disposal to leverage. What does that mean? Guys, there are softwares out there right now. AI is available to us. Like there are so many tools available, right? That if you were to use the tools, right? Your mindset's right. You're growing in skills. And now I'm going to leverage the tools. Guys, I'm telling you right now, if you're taking notes, write this down. Mindset plus skill set plus tool set equals success. Not just in your finances, in any area of your life. If you can get those three things down, man, you are going to crush it, okay? So how in the world are we gonna get you guys from point A to where you are now to point B, which is your desired income, right? How are we gonna get you guys there? Come with me to the board and let's talk about it, okay? This is what I call the seven skills of success. I'm gonna redo the ladder here, okay? The seven skills of success. Step number one, this skill right here. Uh, let me thin this out because I'm gonna need some space. 
Okay. This step right here. You got to know your audience. Who in the world are you called to serve? Let's, let's not even make it that deep. Who in the world do you want to serve, right? Like you've got to know your audience. One of the best ways that you can uh, pick your niche, that's what we talk about in Digital Product Academy, picking your niche, not finding it, because everyone's like, I need to find my niche. It's like, uh, is it under that rock? Is it behind that tree? No, you don't find it, you pick it, right? So one of the best ways to pick your niche, if you're taking notes, write this down. This is the easiest way to know your audience audience or to pick the audience that you want to serve, write this down. Serve the people who you once were. You may not see yourself as like, well, it's not really special that I know how to do this. Guys, I'm telling you, you are more special than you realize. You got to begin to see things differently, man. If you rewind back two years, three years, five years, 10 years to who you were then and then who you are now, the best person to serve as far as picking your niche, choosing your niche, what market do I serve? It's that person. Like rewind back just a handful of years and who were you and what were the things that you wished that somebody could have mentored you on? And then that right there, my friends, that is your market. Don't for a second be like, oh man, this stuff's easy. Like you can both, no, people are looking for help. People just like you have grown into the person that you are. People are looking for someone to give them the sauce on how are you, how did you do that, right? And I'll be honest with you. In Digital Product Academy, my wife and I, we were beginners in business with digital products, just six now coming into seven, but just a handful of years ago, I was beginning my journey just a handful of years ago and in the Digital Product Academy, guess what? I am now serving my students and showing them things that I wish somebody would have showed me. The same thing can go for you guys. So number one, you've got to know your audience. Serve the people who you once were, okay? Number two, the next step. Let's see if I can make these a little thinner. The next step here, you've got to know how to communicate with your audience, okay? You have to know how to communicate with your audience. Now, language is extremely important. Why? Because without language, two people cannot understand one another. So you have got to either, number one, develop language that your audience speaks, or number two is even better, if you serve the person who you used to be, you already speak that language because you once were that person. So you've got to begin to speak the language that people can hear and connect with. Again, you know, I'm a believer. All of my success comes from principles in the Bible. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And I say, one of the practical applications of that statement is, if you put your voice out there, your sheep will know your voice. But they're not going to know your voice if you don't put some language out there. You've got to start talking to people, man. You gotta start putting stuff out there. You gotta start talking to people like, guys, are you struggling with XYZ in XYZ market or niche? I was there just XYZ years ago, and I'm telling you, here are the top three ways to not fall into the trap of XYZ. Like talk the language to them, guys. When you speak the language to them, they're gonna connect with you on an extremely deep level. And this is where a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs miss it, is they don't know how to effectively communicate to their people. And then they wonder why they never make sales. They wonder why that they can't break past a certain point of income. Oh, how come no one's buying my thing? Because are, are you really truly speaking the language that somebody understands and can connect with, are you putting your voice out there for your sheep to hear, right? So guys, number two, you've got to know how to communicate to your market. Let's talk about the third step, okay? You have got to know how to market. Oops. You have to know how to market to your audience. 
You guys hear me say it all the time. If they don't know you, then they can't flow you. What does that mean? You might have the best, most incredible, solves every single problem for your market product or service that exists on the planet. But if no one knows that that product or service exists, no one's gonna buy it from you. Here's a very quick example, okay? Um, does Starbucks make the best cup of coffee you've ever had in your life? No or no, right? Does McDonald's make the best cheeseburger you've ever had in your life, no or no, right? But why are they some of the most profitable companies in the world? It's because they're the most known. If you're driving down the street and there is a Starbucks on the left that is well lit and there's people there, right? And you're in the middle of nowhere. And then on the right, there's like a shack with like a tumbleweed. There's like an old dog sleeping on the front, right? It's not well lit, the sign's hanging off. But what if that little shack had the best coffee in the world? It doesn't matter because you're not gonna go to that coffee shop. You're gonna go to what is known. Guys, this whole idea of, you know, don't be known, don't talk about your thing. It's hogwash. You've got to talk about the good thing that God has put in you because God has designed humanity and he's designed the economy to become obsessive with serving one another. You have things that you can help me with, like handyman stuff, and I have things that I can help you with. And when we become passionate about helping each other in the ways that you help me where you are skilled and I help you where I am skilled. That's how God has set up the economy. That's how God has even set up fulfillment in our souls a lot of times. Yes, there are spiritual parts, but I'm talking about like fulfillment, man. Like, man, what's my purpose? Go help somebody. But you're not going to be able to help anybody if you don't market to them, if you don't tell them about the good thing that God has put in you. So that third skill. And now remember, all of these begin to compound on on top of each other, okay? If you only knew your audience and that was the only skill you had, it's still, take me back to the board here, Rome. Consider this, okay? If you only have this skill, okay, and you have this step, it's better than no steps, but this step to get here is still a very large leap. And the same thing goes, if you only have these two steps, it's better than no steps, but it's still a pretty large leap. But can you see now, as you begin to build the skills, it gets easier and easier and easier to become successful. Guys, this is why, if you're taking notes, write this down. This is why it's easier to make a lot of money in a short amount of time than it is to make a little bit of money over a long period of time. People don't understand when you have skills that have compounded on top of each other, it's very easy to make money. Like, I will tell you guys this, I told you just a handful of years ago, my business, like we're in the grinder, man, hamster wheel, just grinding, trying to make 50K a month, in my business, pay all my employees, etc. Now that I have more skills and they've compounded, it's no big deal to make six figures in a day. And that's not to boast, it's just to say, I have an easier way to get to success. And the same thing can go for you, all right? So let's go to the next skill that you need, which is number four. If you're getting value in today's training, just drop some fire emojis in the comments. I'm trying to hook y'all up with crazy value, okay? If you're liking it, drop some fire. So step number four, what's the next skill that you need, okay? You need to create an irresistible offer for your audience. Okay, what's an irresistible offer? An irresistible offer is an offer that is so good, it solves their problem so well that they feel dumb if they were to tell you no, right? When you begin to build these skills, stack these skills on top of one another, hopefully by now, if you're on, on this step of the skill process, you're gonna understand exactly what your market or your niche wants, and you're gonna go, because this is exactly what I wanted two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, I wish I could have had this. All you have to do is say, man, I wish I had this and this and this and this. Put those together in the form of digital products and offer them to your niche. You have got to make this offer so irresistible that they're like, I absolutely need this, right? Like none of us go into uh, the grocery store and walk out like, man, grocery stores are a rip off. Like I knew they were scamming me. Why do we not do that? No one's ever walked out of 
of a grocery store and said, man, grocery stores are the biggest scam. They're stealing our money every day. I'm boycotting grocery stores. Why don't we do that? Because their offer is irresistible. It is literally solving an obvious problem for the market, which is we need food to survive. Your offer for your audience should solve a very obvious problem for your people to where they're like, yes, Guys, that's the beauty of when you have a perfectly fit, irresistible offer, your clients are no longer gonna be like, oh, she tried to rip me off. He tried to rip me up. They're gonna be like, this is amazing. This is life-changing. I needed this so bad, right? So start thinking, what exactly did I need, did I want X amount of years ago that if someone would have just put these couple of things or this handful of things together, it would have helped me tremendously. That right there is your offer, my friend, okay? If you're ready for the next step, drop a five in the comments. Step number five. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of surgery here because I'm running out of space. Let's see if I can do this. You come up here, okay? There we go. <laughs> Maybe I did too much surgery. Okay, let's bring it back down a little bit because I was like, man, that's kind of a far leap. Okay, that looked a little bit better. Okay, so now <laughs> step number five, okay? What's step number five? Step number five. You have got to know how to sell to your audience. If you're taking notes, write this down. Selling is good because selling is serving. Selling is good because selling is serving. What does that mean? Guys, if you have this idea that sales is bad, it's gonna be really, really, really hard for you to make any sales. Like, and I don't know if you knew this or not, but like the heartbeat of your business is sales. And if the heart doesn't beat, the blood doesn't flow. And what is the flow of blood? That is your cash flow, right? Your limbs will die. Your brain will die. If it doesn't get blood, how does that happen? The heart has to beat, sales have to be made so that the whole entire business can be healthy and thriving and functioning the way that it's supposed to function. So if you're here like, man, sales is so sleazy. I talk to a lot of newbie entrepreneurs who are like, I'm, you know, I, I've got my program. I've got my, my course is created and I, I, I know my niche and I really want to help people. I just, I'm a sales. I just, I'm not a salesperson. Stop confessing that over yourself. You are a salesperson. How do I know that? Every single one of us is born a salesman or a saleswoman. How do I know that? Because I have kids, y'all. Like my three-year-old, right? Dad, can I have an ice cream? No, absolutely not. You haven't eaten dinner yet. Dad, please. No, it's 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 not time for ice cream. Well, what if I, uh, instead of having ice cream now, like what if, or, or instead of eating dinner later, what if I had a little bit of ice cream now, then I eat dinner and I give a little bit more like, guys, all of us have been there, right? Like selling, here's what I need you guys to understand, okay? Selling is not convincing, please write this down. Selling is not convincing, selling is persuading. Have you ever hung out with like a best friend and you guys are like, yo, let's go see a movie. And you're like, cool, I wanna go see this movie. And your friend's like, oh, actually, I heard about this other movie, we should go check this out. You'd be like, oh, okay, cool, cool, let's let's go. Did that person just sleaze you out? No, they persuaded you to do something that you already wanted to do. Here's the thing, guys. When you have these steps locked in place, your people already want the thing that you have to offer them to solve their problems. So don't feel bad about going, hey guys, I would love to solve your problems. It only costs whatever, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks, 10,000, 20, whatever it is, right? Like do not feel bad to serve your people at a higher level instead of just giving stuff away for free. The punchline is this, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. I can't tell you how many times I have scholarshiped people into a number of my courses. Like, okay, okay, I'll just let you in for free. Those mugs didn't even log in once. They didn't show up to any calls. They didn't get anything done. They didn't make any money. They didn't accomplish anything that the, that the program helped them to accomplish. Why? Because they didn't have any skin in the game. The Bible says that your heart is where your treasure lies. So you have got to become okay with inviting people to put some treasure on the line because when they put treasure on the line, their heart is going to follow. Guys, I'm telling you right now, if you have a $100,000 car, that thing is gonna get washed a couple times a week by hand. It's gonna be kept in the garage, 
right? The kids are not allowed to eat in it, right? But if you have like a $500 Honda Civic that you bought from some dude on a back alley just cause you needed a car, man, you gonna let the birds use the restroom on that thing. It's, oh, it's hailing, ah, I only paid 500 bucks for it. You're not gonna take as good of care of something that is cheap versus if you paid a higher price. So don't be afraid to serve your people by selling them. Let's move on, okay? Okay, so number six, skill number six. You have got to know how to bring transformation to your audience. If you're taking notes, write this down. We don't sell products and services, we sell transformation. Guys, it's not about how much should I put in the program or what should I charge or should I put 10 courses in here or should I put three, how long should they be? None of that matters as much as how fast can you get them a transformation? In fact, I need at least 10 people in the comments to drop this. More is not better, faster results are better. Why have I built my Digital Product Academy the way that I've built it? I have tried to set the program up in such a way that students can get results as fast as possible if they're willing to take action. And that's how come my students get crazy fast results because they just take action. I'm not selling a product or service, I'm selling a transformation. So you have to understand, okay, I need to, what's What's the best way I can bring a transformation to my people, okay? And then lastly, guys, the last step to success. You've got to learn to repeat the process. If you're taking notes, write this down. Don't get bored with it, get paid with it. As entrepreneurs, I'm talking in first person now, from past experience. For some reason, we love to launch things, but we have a really hard time following through and sticking with a thing, right? In fact, for years, I had like four, five, six, seven businesses, and I was trying to get everything going. I'm like, you know, I this is how to do it, right? Until a mentor said, why are you doing all of this? And I'm like, well, because that's, you know, millionaires have seven streams of income, I thought. And he goes, no, 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 no. You need one thing that you do exceptionally well. Right now, you're doing 10 things less than okay. So because you're doing all 10 of these things less than okay, you're getting less than okay results. But if you were to put your focus into one thing, and instead of getting bored, just commit to the process and repeat that, that cycle over and over of these steps to success. Guys, I'm telling you right now, you are going to begin to get to success way, way, way faster. Now here's the punchline I wanna leave you guys and gals with, okay? The same way your money can compound in a bank, your skills can compound on top of one another. When you build your ladder of success, you can now use this ladder however you would like. You can move it in between these two buildings or you could go down the street and you could move it in between these two buildings. All you gotta do is just take the ladder with you and go, oh, I know exactly how this works, right? Because those skills that you have, no one can take from you.